The Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra is an expensive phone, and I still truly feel the best value you're gonna get today with an Android device is the mid-range nice sector. Something like the Galaxy S20 FE, maybe even the regular Galaxy S21, it's starting to be discounted pretty good right now, and if you're looking for 90% of the features of the Ultra, that's the phone to get. But if you're a hardcore nerd like me, an enthusiast, you're looking at the Ultra, and this phone interests you the most. And here's the thing. You know, I haven't done a lot of phone reviews and this one excites me because this is my favorite Android phone that I've used as of today. And Samsung has finally done a lot of things right. For me personally, it's not a better camera or a faster processor. It's the compatibility between Android and Windows. This is something I always valued when I use my iPhone and I use a Mac. I can easily just iMessage between both devices. I can airdrop. There's just this nice connection that the Apple ecosystem has. And Samsung has partnered with Microsoft to make this possible between Android and Windows. Now straight up, it's not as fluid as what is happening in the Apple world, but it's getting so much better. Maybe that's not important to you, but I spend eight to nine hours a day on my computer. And the fact that I don't have to pick up my phone and that I can have it tethered to it properly makes a huge difference in my life. So to me, if I'm sticking on Android side, I'm gonna buy a Galaxy device because that's gonna give me the best version of it. This year, yes, it's a big phone, it's taller, but it's much easier to hold than the iPhone 12 Pro. It's not as wide, it's much more comfortable in the hand. It's true, I don't like curved edges, and this one has one, but it's not as bad as previous Galaxy devices. It's still there, takes a bit of getting used to, but hopefully next year they go with a full flat display. The display itself is one of the best, you know? Like, this thing is gorgeous. You know, I value the iPhone for being a little bit more neutral in terms of its color profile, but this punchy display just brings happiness to my eyes. Like looking at it is awesome. The colors are punchy, they're vibrant, they're, they just look great. And the fact that you can have 120 Hertz at QHD and, and still have that beautiful fast scrolling effect is, is wonderful. And, and they've done this by still giving you great battery life. Like the 5,000 milliamp hour easily gets me through the entire day. Now, the one thing that still bothers me is the fingerprint scanner. It's better with the second generation of their ultrasonic technology, but I still have a lot of inconsistent logins. Now, right now, it seems to be working okay, but sometimes I'll just turn on the phone and tap on it, and then I'll have to do it multiple times just to, to log in. It's just not as quick and smooth as optical scanners, but it's only slightly better than the previous version. Now, the build quality has been great. I don't have any major scratches on the body. I've been rocking it without a case. I do have some scratches on the display, but there's a screen protector on it, so make sure you keep one on your phone. This is not an ad. I just find these newer Gorilla glasses to be a lot more durable when you drop the device, but to be a lot softer when it comes to scratches. So if you don't want to rock a case, fine, but at least try and rock a screen protector. Fortunately, not having a micro SD card slot hasn't hindered my experience. I barely use more than 64 gigabytes, so having 512 on this is totally overkill. But of course, I'm not everybody, right? A lot of you still want that slot, and the best thing you can do right now is to put your money on a product that has it. Vote with your dollars, and if that's a feature that's super important to you, there are still other Android devices that have it today. The one thing that really shocked me is the software experience. TouchWiz from the previous days and today One UI has always been not my favorite theme. But One UI 3.0 or 3.1 has been a delight to use, you know? I can swipe down anywhere on the screen, which you could do before, and get my notifications. Something you can't do on the iPhone, you have to do like hand gymnastics on the bigger one just to see your notifications. But this, you do it so easily. And the fact that I can finally swipe to the right and simply get Google Now is massive. No more of Bixby constantly in your face asking for your permission to be used. And this just speaks to me that Samsung is kind of listening to their consumers and scaling back on something they poured a lot of money into. You know, yes, there are still a lot of duplicative apps that are in the background that are there, but you can simply hide them in the folder and just never use them. As for performance, I'm not gonna spend too much time on this because let's be honest, the hardware is so good. Any phone you've bought in the past few years, as long as it's a high-end device using the latest Snapdragon, you know it's gonna be fast even today. And this S21 Ultra with its Snapdragon 888 and 12 to 16 gigabytes of RAM is a monster. Never had I had an issue with micro lag, lag or any sort of frame drop while playing games. It's just an absolute 
absolute total package. And finally, the camera. I'm not gonna go over the specs again. You've seen the spec sheets, you've watched other reviews, but I'm going to say this. This is my favorite Samsung camera I've used. I finally feel confident taking pictures with the Samsung phone. They've always taken good pictures. I just find that it's not as consistent as the iPhone. With previous Galaxy devices, there were autofocusing issues like on the S20 Ultra. There were times where it would overexpose the image or clip the highlights and it would just add this little fluff or error to the photo you're taking. I find that doesn't happen often with the S21 Ultra. And I find that Samsung has really fine tuned their computational photography to be a lot more consistent. And that's really important when you're relying on your smartphone every single day to take pictures with. Even the front facing camera on the S20, it was terrible. It made everyone look pale and awful. It's much better now. I don't think the front facing camera still takes as good pictures as the iPhone 12 Pro Max, but it's pretty darn close. So here's the bottom line. The Galaxy S21 Ultra is a very expensive phone. And if you're looking for the best Android smartphone right now, this is it. But I still feel like you don't need to spend that much money to have an amazing experience. I still think the S20 FE is a more than capable device that pretty much gets 90% of the things done. Same with that regular Galaxy S21. You know, it's a bit smaller, but it's also a lot cheaper. And Samsung has discounted it by a hundred bucks already, if that's something you're interested in. If you have any more questions about this device, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next video.